Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Potential. And today I am here with personal stylist and life coach, Megan Nicola. And she's going to talk to us all about how our appearance and our style can be integrated with our entrepreneurial journey to hopefully make uh, us come on leaps and bounds in our entrepreneurial journey, making an income loving what we do. And also potentially discussing raising self-esteem through the things that we wear and uh, the style that we have within our business. And I guess this may a little bit go over into branding in some respects. Um, so Megan, tell us a little bit about your journey. What is it that interests you about style in business? Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. I think this is such a, um, a genius topic. Um, so I've been a personal stylist and a life coach ever since I realized the link between our self-esteem and our self-worth with our personal style and how we carry ourselves. There is massive, there's so much research um, that backs up the um, overlap between our confidence and the way we communicate ourselves through our wardrobe. And it's a really overshadowed um, topic. It's got a lot of, um, I guess, negative stigmas when it comes to caring about what you wear and it being considered vain. But actually in a career aspect, and it's even in personal life in general, it is really important to understand and know what and who you are and what your message is and be able to then correctly and authentically communicate that through your wardrobe. So for a business owner, it's almost like instant branding. It's really, really important to identify the message and the, um, the ethos and the values behind your brand and be able to then on first instincts and um, first impression, be able to communicate that effectively to your ideal client. It's almost like a, um, yeah, it's almost, it is a marketing tool. Yeah, um, I can imagine it being that way, actually. And uh, I think for some of us, I mean, I've worked in kennels before, and uh, I, I actually back then relied a lot on jobbers, funnily enough, because I always had a thing that I wanted to somehow keep my femininity into what I was doing. And I found if I wore bigger clothes, like they may have been, well, I was going to say they may have been more comfortable, but jodhpurs I found were super comfortable and I was able to keep my femininity. And that mattered to me. And I didn't know that it did at the time, but now I know a bit more about those aspects of ourselves and how we're bringing them into, um, energetically into business. I recognize now what I was going through. And back then we didn't have like skinny jeans and jeggings. Yeah. They weren't even they weren't even available, so it was like jumpers or nothing really. <laughs> Something warm that was yeah. you know tight. So yes, yeah. interesting that that I uh, I remember doing this, and that sticks in my mind because I know there's going to be a lot of people that work with dogs that watch this and think, well, I can't wear nice clothes, you know, <laughs> work with dogs. So it's like I guess no, I, I guess that's kind of it. Obviously, the, um differentiates between different business sectors so for me it's obviously as a personal life personal status and life coach it's a little bit easier for me to dress up but still my values I think it's really important to no matter what business you own um, and even in the um, pet and animal industry it's still really important to understand and know what your values are and what message you want to send because you're doing it subconsciously anyway like you just said you know when you um, are aware of that you realize the choices you make actually do stem from something that's important to you um, and if you don't know what those are and if they're not aligning with exactly how you want to portray, portray yourself then obviously you need to strip it back kind of get to know understand and connect with yourself again because obviously as a um, I guess is it all a spiritual industry a most of uh, watching. Yes, I'm not sure. Maybe because I like attracts like a little bit. So it could yeah. be a lot of people watching that uh, know me for that reason. But uh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, maybe yeah, that's quite an interesting angle because for anyone more spiritual, you tend to have a better self understanding. Um, and obviously you want to communicate that authentically. So I think it would be a really great idea for anyone watching to kind of write down, even if it's just, or maybe you've even got them for your brand, um, your values, the message behind it, and kind of see, okay, so where can I, am I properly communicating these? I mean, for example, like, you think of dress rehearsals for actors, um, you know, there's research that shows that the clothes you wear have a direct influence on the way you perform. Um, so for actors doing dress rehearsals, when they, there's such a difference between kind of stepping into that outfit and then doing performance um, because they use the clothing as a way to feel and therefore communicate a message. I think sometimes even if you're just starting out in your business, um, your clothes can be used as a really powerful way of making yourself feel confident, feel self-assured. It's almost like a sense of um, a sense of power that you can use to help yourself feel that much more confident in a new environment um, and to be able to really connect with your ideal clients. Um, even things like... Um, it's almost like, I remember the, um, one of the Swiss banks, they had their styling guidelines leaked and it went viral. And it was all down to kind of, I mean, it was down to like, you must wear a watch because this communicates that you are time efficient and therefore reliable. Um, polished appearances shows a sense of professionalism, high value, um, maybe in the, you know, definitely in the, um, pet industry branding is huge so even if it's like wearing a branded t-shirt because I understand again you you need to match your it needs to be comfortable it needs to work efficiently for your business and what you're doing every day it's got to fit style has to fit into your lifestyle so even if it's branded t-shirts that kind of or branded apparel um, which could communicate con continuity and trust in the service um, all these kind of little um, little tweaks are really easy things to kind of implement into your wardrobe and would make a massive, massive difference. I think also there's an element of pride if you've maybe started even a dog walking business and you, you mm. have like a fleece with your logo. There's an element yeah. of pride in that, I think. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. And, and when you connect, you kind of become a personal brand. Yes. <clears throat> And that's important. Oh, things in so many different colours now as well, can't we? <laughs> you know, you could take a pick. No, definitely. The colour, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about colour in two ways because there's the way other people perceive colour, but there's also the way you're looking at the colour would, I guess, make you feel a certain way as well. Yes. So there is huge um, power behind the psychology of colour and the way that we each communicate with it and identify with certain colors. I mean, you get personalities who see in color mm -hmm. um, and they identify emotions with color. Um, so that again, is a really, really powerful way of kind of subtly and almost subliminally sending messages to your clients to be able to trust you, to um, see you as even maybe a bit of, um, an expert, you know, some sense of authority, all those kind of things are just really, really good to understand and bring into your business from, it is like a branding, marketing um, perspective. Um, it, there, needs, there doesn't need to be any vanity in it. I strongly believe that caring about you wear, what you wear and how you communicate with the world is not vain. It is a sense of survival where communicative beings um we connect with people and obviously with animals um so these are all just really interesting things to kind of pay a little bit of attention to and um, direct your focus on yeah so how does somebody kind of know really what suits them i mean because i guess we get into habits more than anything don't we yeah. what we wear yeah um obviously the, you have to go into D. So each person, we are just, we are different. We are unique. Um, you break it down into body shape. So I actually have a really, really great video that I filmed 
last week um, and it's on my Facebook. So if you search Megan Nicholas Stylist, it'll be my most recent video and it breaks down every single body shape and it's got the style guidelines, how to identify which body shape you are. And that bases the foundation of your style. So once you know your body shape, you know what um, styles suit you, what shapes suit you, what fabrics, what colors, um, or actually not what colors. And then you go into kind of your personality traits. Okay, so what do you want? What would your ideal self dress like? What does she look like? How does she feel in her clothing? Um, what do others pick up on um, her sense of style? What do they think that communicates to them? And you kind of build. Um, so body shape is the foundation. Um, and then you get personality and your personal style. And then you add to colors, um, the psychology of colors. Um, and then it just becomes a really fun process. Um, so yeah, definitely check out that video that will kind of give a more in-depth um, view to each person watching individually. Um, my other thing that I always suggest to clients is to create like a Pinterest board. So a mood board of, even if you just search, you know, street style or style, <clears throat> and you'll just naturally gravitate towards certain, um, certain types of things that just appeal to you. And you'll then find when you reflect on all the photos, there's a lot of similarities. That ends up being kind of um, the basis for which your ideal style needs to be made. You just have to be careful that you've not chosen these things out of a fear-based comfort version. You've really got to pick and pull those images from identifying with, okay, what does my ideal self look like? How does she dress? How does she feel? And then you kind of can see the kind of styles that you need to work towards. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, and I once had my colors done by somebody Oh, it was a while ago now. Um, I was living in the UK then, so now I have slightly more of a plan generally all year round. So I don't know if they might have changed, actually, because I don't know if I could have got away with this colour in my colours, actually, but I don't mind it now. But I think mine were kind of like warms and teals, teal and uh, kind of darkish mauves and things like that. Like, not... You know, Spring. I could have been I could have been I can't remember the label I've still got the that she gave me like a little book and it has all different colors in it um, yeah. it was actually spot on and I started only purchasing clothing that fitted in with that those and and it's interesting how how true it is and how it seems to then light you up and you feel a bit more abundant in that way as well and then you seem to re attract different things as well it's, it's so interesting how this something like you said it could be classed as vain but actually and it appears subtle but it's it's kind of not it's because i guess colors color really is on the electromagnetic spectrum it really is so it's going to have an effect on us no definitely and i mean there's a reason why massive marketing companies and you know massive brands pay so much money for um marketing experts to come in and kind of and that goes right down to color so if it can be used in um, logos and signs there's no reason as to why it can't be used in your wardrobe mm -hmm. um i really really strongly believe that um i mean you get dressed every single day so <laughs> yeah. instead of making it an unconscious habit make it a conscious habit and make it work for you you know if it's going to be building your business you know creating the lifestyle that you want becoming the woman that you want to become um none of that has to be out of vanity or a sense of mm -hmm. ego i think it's just a very pure kind of way of empowering yourself yeah and do you do the color thing or where could people find out more information about that yeah so i do within my personal styling sessions we go through your body shape we identify kind of brands and where to shop for your body shapes um because certain brands kind of identify and work better for some bodies compared to others um and then we break down the the, the colors um i will give you your color season tell you you know how these colors work and why and how to incorporate into them into your wardrobe um and how much of a difference they make on just the radiance of your skin um yeah it is incredible it's a very transforming but very easily shifting um session 
It's kind of easy, simple, tangible tools that actually, I mean, like I said earlier, you're dressing every day anyway. So we've just got to make sure it's working for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think it's cool. I think it's a good, um, it's a good way to look at things that, that uh, we may not have actually yet considered as part of our entrepreneurial journey, really. That's why I just wanted to include some tips yeah. on you. <laughs> but I know you're also, you're a trained life coach, did you say, as well? Yeah, so I've merged the two purely because um, there is this massive overlap, overlap between personal style and life coaching and our spiritual and, you know, our mindset, um, our sense of self-love. So I predominantly work with women who either come from kind of a people-pleasing nature, have a history of kind of codependent relationships, are really looking to feel confident um and happy within themselves without seeking that validation from anyone else mm -hmm. and we go through this transformation of either um one-to-one -one coaching or group coaching program and we strip it right back and we kind of assess where you're holding yourself back and what your self-limiting beliefs are and how we can instill some more confidence and more self-love because yeah the basis of everything is love even a sense of style is based on appreciating and loving yourself so much that you want to communicate yourself authentically with everyone else. Um, so it's a really, yeah, empowering kind of a mix of two different industries that aren't always kind of mixed. And I felt there were just, there was a gap in the market for that. And I felt women really craved and wanted to know how to feel confident and sexy, but not necessarily, didn't necessarily know how to, how to do that or kind of where to start. Yeah. Because actually, funnily enough, sometimes life coaching or the thought of having a life coach can seem quite indulgent. But I'm wondering if that really, it's, you know, tell us a bit more about like how that could spill out into kind of your business and, and what you do financially. Definitely. I mean, they always say that yourself, investing in yourself is the one investment you will always make a return on. And it's, you know, you are your biggest asset. Um, and without your mindset being in the right place and without having this real kind of connection and love for yourself and appreciation because entrepreneurship is not easy. It can be incredibly lonely and isolating and you have to be your best friend throughout this process. And if that relationship is not strong from the beginning, it will inevitably hold you back. Um, I work with a lot of female entrepreneurs purely for that reason, because they've set up all the foundations for their business. They kind of know their marketing plan, but their mindset holds them back so much um, to the point where they just don't believe in themselves enough to kind of push through those hard times. Um, and I mean, it, you know, it affects our, it positively impacts your relationships. Um, your family time, how you communicate with others, so your boundaries, you'll find you're a lot more supported and you'll attract much healthier relationships and friendships because you now come from a real sense of um, grounding and um, a sense of love for yourself so that you're able to establish boundaries. Um, it can affect kind of your lifestyle, you know, if you're feeling good you'll you will look after your body a lot more you know affects your wellness and your health and fitness level finding that motivation again it, it literally transforms it is life-changing yeah so that's why i kind of see it as a yes it's a, i guess it's a luxury but it's a luxury that we can all make the choice to have because it is an investment and it's an investment you will always reap benefits from and I guess there's an element of accountability in that as well. Because exactly. most, yeah. If we're working, especially if we work with animals quite a lot, that they're not going to keep us accountable to stuff. <laughs> Maybe in a routine. Yeah. Having someone that's keeping us accountable, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's a mass. Yeah, that was a great point. There's that sense of, you know, you've got the support, the guidance, you're not alone, but I will, you know, you've got someone to hold you accountable for your actions and for your, you know, just making sure that you actually go out there and make this career of yourself that you've been dreaming of, make this lifestyle that you've, you know, you've wanted your whole life. Um, and I'm really there to kind of support you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So going back to style a bit, one of the things I wondered is like style on a budget. You know, how do we make this kind of thing fit 
at the beginning of our business maybe when we haven't got a lot of money to splash around yes i mean there's a, a massive misconception that you have to spend a lot of money to look stylish or to have a nice wardrobe and it literally couldn't be further from the truth. Every high street brand, I mean, so the designer sets what is in trend for the latest season. High streets then use this and rip them off and create lower budget and more commercial versions. So your high street brands are still just as good as any other kind of store. Um, but then you get stuff like shopping at outlets, um, which have massive, massive discounts. So basically, big brands when they've got stock that hasn't sold or they've overbought for the season, they ship them to what's considered outlets and you either get them in big warehouses, yeah, or you shop online, you can get online outlets. And you can get stuff like um, big brands on about 50, 60% discount rates. So outlets is also a great option. Um, you sign up to newsletters that kind of give you um, the latest sales or subscribe to, or just keep an eye out for um, high street sales. There's always, always sales. Mm -hmm. um, for people who like really want to sort of go a bit more eco. Yes. discussed this before, but like, you know, there's a lot of us in the spiritual world that kind of want to go a bit more eco. With yeah. I know there are even, I think H&M did a brand of organic cotton stuff. Yeah. I've have been shopping properly in the UK for for enough time in the last three years to kind of know the yeah. answer. But, you know, can we get sort of eco-y stuff now quite easily? A hundred percent. There is a massive. Um, I mean, since the I don't know if anyone's seen the True Cost documentary, okay. so that was kind of a real um, eye-opening documentary about the fast pace of the fashion industry and how destructive it is and for um, the environment um, and since then there's been a massive shift towards more um, economical more sustainable options for fashion one of them being obviously brands but so many high street brands will have um, I can't remember off the top of my head but there are a lot of brands who have sustainable lines within um, their ranges um, also capsule wardrobes so capsule wardrobes are kind of a limited amount of pieces in your wardrobe and um, they can range from like 18 pieces to uh, I think the biggest is about 40 pieces, 32 maybe. Um, and you just condense what you wear and you, um, so you have staple sets of items and then you just interchange each and you can create like 50, 60 outfits from 20 pieces if done correctly. So that's also another alternative. Um, also, buying wisely. So even though I'm saying, you know, shop sales, and I would say invest in just one or two key pieces, maybe even just one a month, um, because by the end of the year, you've got 12 really well thought out purchases in your wardrobe, and that's enough to make at least a handful, 10, yeah, probably about 10 or 12 um, outfits. Um, so you don't necessarily have to buy <laughs> loads of things. Um, I'm a huge fan of, you can get um, evenings where you, um, you do clothes swap evenings. Oh, yes. So if you search, yeah, in your local community, you'll find um, people who are swapping clothes. And I think that's just ingenious because there's only so many styles anyway that people create. So eventually things come back into style. And if you're not going to wear it, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Yeah. Um, and it's a really nice way of kind of recycling clothes. Um, and obviously, the this don't is put in. What were you going to say? Sorry. <laughs> then, <laughs> I was just going to end off with um, if you do a wardrobe detox, which I thoroughly highly highly recommend you must start through the, just the beginning of your personal style journey um, which is something I do with my clients start with a wardrobe detox get rid of everything that no longer aligns with your new message that you've kind of um, identified you want to communicate and donate so donate clothes and um, the less yeah the less wastage we can create the better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
in fact that can come into a little bit of sort of the clutter clearing the way that it's quite cathartic to sort of rejig the energy as well in your wardrobe yes and in your all your cupboards really <laughs> all of that <laughs> yeah it's like Do a bit of Mary Kondo yeah it kind of brings in different energy in a way yeah definitely I mean if you I mean if you think about the amount of um time and money it would save you if you had a a wardrobe that just worked so efficiently that when you got up in the morning every one of those pieces has been thought um specifically thought out you know aligned with you you know makes you feel confident the minute you put it on um you save yourself so much time in the morning like i'm not that great at a morning person so my wardrobe has to work even more efficiently for me to kind of it must never be a stress for you it's a fun you know engaging experience and so yes to de declutter um not only helps your um the energy of your space but also the energy of your mind and your mindset mm, i think that's the key isn't it it's uh, there's an element of planning and taking responsibility for it that we just mm. in a way we could so easily slip back into the comfort zone which would be yeah. we are used to wearing yes it's so interesting Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So any sort of final thoughts or things that you want to share about your journey, what you've learned about being an entrepreneur? Or... Um, I would say for anyone that's just starting out, just keep going. It does get easier. And I think when you're doing something that you're passionate about um, and you're fully aligned with, if you've got a gift, it will naturally arrive at your doorstep. And um, it's just such a a rewarding experience I couldn't think of doing anything else with my life um I love to help other women and I you know I truly feel like it's what I was put on this earth to do um and when it comes with your style just have fun um seek that guidance if you need it um as I said earlier I do kind of virtual styling sessions and one-to-one -one, um but I think it is just a really good investment to have to really understand, okay, how can I put my best foot forward every single day to make this business and to make my lifestyle exactly what I need it to be. Mm, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, okay, well, we'll wrap up there. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. you for hints and <laughs> ideas. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we will uh, we will be back, or I will be back at least for the next episode of Potential, and uh, I look forward to seeing you there.